there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host. It's been a few weeks since my last car review. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm really happy to have a fun car. I've got, as you can see, a nice little all-electric behind me. It's the 2024 Fiat 500e. It's Stellantis' actually first all-electric offering in North America, and it comes in a really small package. Uh, and I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, first, I want to say thank you very much to Stellantis Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days to buzz around in urban traffic, zip in and out and park easy and go pick up stuff. And actually, I threw quite a lot of stuff in this car. It's, believe it or not, it can hold quite a lot of stuff. You put the seats down. Just had I've had oodles of fun in this vehicle this week. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of people looking at it. So let me give you a quick ro uh, lowdown on this uh, all-electric offering from Fiat. Now the Fiat 500e, it's not a big car. It's an A-segment product called a mini compact. So compact, we call it here subcompacts as well, but it's a small car. It's definitely a two plus two with uh, the plus two part being very sparse, but you know, it's a great commuter car. And if you're familiar with the Fiat 500 family, they've been fun cars. They do have a larger version in the gas. Uh, ice equivalent uh, that's available. It's been available for a while. We may see something bigger, but for now we're just looking at this two-door subcompact. Now these are made in turn Italy. So as you can see by the design, it just flows with Italian design. It keeps the heritage um, of the Fiat brand and of the original design language. They talk about combining La Dolce, La Dolce Vita, I'm going to probably butcher that, which is really the, the iconic spirit of the Fiat brand. Um, and, you know, it's sustainable and emits zero emissions. So, you know, I'm happy that they've brought this vehicle forward. I've been buzzed about it for quite some time, and I'm really, really uh, excited to see it. The classic design, everybody recognizes it and says, you know, I took it to uh, an EV event today. A lot of people came through uh, in a fair uh, setting and so many people just, this was a, such an eyed catcher for them in the design. You know, it's got that, that Fiat look, it's subcompact. It's got that really happy face, you know, the eyebrows over the lights kind of thing. People are saying, oh, it looks like a face, really happy face. It just brings a smile to people's face when they look at this vehicle. And I think that's purposely done by Fiat. They've kept the original design language, but modernized it with some nice lines, some nice arrow bits and stuff like that, bits and bobs, as my friends in, in uh, the Brits would say, and really just kept it looking as a nice functional vehicle for booting around in. All right, so if we pop the hood, we've got the fan running here because it's warm today, another hot, humid day. So the car is cooling itself down after driving it, but it's got a single motor. It's a front wheel drive variant. The single motor produces 117 horsepower, 162 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot for a car that weighs just under 3,000 pounds. So it's actually pretty zippy getting in and out of traffic. I've been driving this in Sherpa mode, and I'll tell you a little bit more about driving modes coming up, which is their, their lowest power setting, eco mode per, per se. And I've had no problem in getting up the speed in traffic and moving around. Even did some, some uh, country road jaunts, uh, doing a couple, you know, about 150 kilometers uh, back and forth to, uh, to another city. And it's been quite fun to drive. Now that uh, range, of course, or the motors are um, powered by a battery pack that is 42 kilowatts. And it's a little, just slightly bigger than the original, than the uh, upgraded Leaf, of course, uh, and offers a very similar range at about 240 EPA uh, kilometers, or about 149 miles. Um, some estimates are around 227 kilometers, and that's about what I'm seeing in the real world right now, is about that 230 kilometer mark. So it's pretty close to its EPA range. Probably stretch it out a bit more because it takes a couple of charges for the car to recognize your driving patterns and kind of readjust the range. And whoever had this before was probably booting around a lot in it. So you know, shot, shot the range down because they're hammering it all the time. I'm just driving it normal, going back and forth to work, doing my stuff and it's starting to reset and recalculate the range, especially in this nice summer weather that we've had. So really more than adequate for the type of vehicle that this is. Now for charging the battery here in the Fiat 500e, it does have a CCS combo plug, as you can see here. It's got the two connectors. Level one, level two AC will charge up to 11 kilowatts. And for DC fast charging, it does support 85 kilowatts maximum 
which means that you can go from 0% to 80% in 35 minutes. So if you are decide to road trip this or at least do some intercity runs where you're going to maybe stop once, you can stop for about 25 to 30 minutes to go from 10 to 80%, let's say, uh, which is fairly the normal now in that range and then continue on to your destination, let's say another couple hundred kilometers. Now, obviously, we don't get these kind of cars for cargo space. As I mentioned earlier, this is a two plus two and the plus two is pretty small. But as you can see by the B-roll in the pictures, if you do pop the, the, the rear hatch open, you are and put the seats down, you have about seven and a half cubic feet uh, in the luggage compartment. I don't have the total interior space for that, but it's going to be still on the small side. Now, in saying that, I was able to put a lot of stuff in this vehicle earlier today. I had a 10 by 10 tent, I had a folding table, I had a couple of camping chairs, I had a box of stuff, I had some weights, I had a bunch of stuff because I did an outdoor event today and it all fit with the two seats down. So it's quite surprising how you could pack a lot of stuff in here and still um, you know, maximize the fun and, the, and the, what you get for roominess in this vehicle. Here's some quick video of the interior of the 500D, and it's a nice interior. I like the color splashes. I like the patterns. The seat materials are nice. Um, this is the red version. There's also the La Prima trim, which has leatherette and a bunch of other features. Um, you know, the center console is pretty small, as you can see. I didn't even realize that it actually slid like that until a few days uh, into it. So it was kind of a bit of a surprise, but really nice that you could find a position to put your elbow on while you're driving. Again, seat materials are nice. They do come with front heated seats. The splash of red on the dash is nice. I believe in other uh, color palettes that might be available, especially in the U.S., you can change that up. There's the seven inch uh, di instrument display for the driver and then the ten and a half, of course, infotainment system for the Uconnect. Um, it's got a standard, it's got a seven speaker uh, or a Fiat Auto system, which is standard, which I said was okay. You can upgrade to the JBL seven speaker, lots of stuff. Again, no sunroof, no um, glass roof available for this. And then there's that back seat. It's pretty tiny. It definitely is a plus two with that single cup holder there. Um, again, you can squeeze a couple of kids in there, no problem. I went to the back and sat, sat in there. I'd have to move the passenger seat up a little bit, but it works. So in a pinch, you could carry a couple of people in, a, in an environment that's okay. Just wouldn't want to be there too long. And one other thing before we go for a drive is the turning circle like this. Of course, it's a small car. It turns on a dime. Turns uh, less than 32 feet, 31 and a half feet turning circle. Very small, very super easy to maneuver in and out of driveways, in and out of parking spots, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, you know, it's a small car and those are the benefits of a small car. Now, before we go for a drive, just want to talk about the mode settings and the drive modes. There's three, there's normal, range, and Sherpa. Sherpa is pretty well like it sounds. It's an eco mode, limits the amount of power that the, uh, that the motor will deliver, limits your speed to 80 kilometers an hour. Now you can go past that. And if you floor the accelerator, if you punch it, it will give you max power. So if you need to get out of a situation, uh, avoid an emergency maneuver or something, it will give you the power to do that. But standard, the Sherpa mode is the eco driving mode, limits the power, limits the speed. You can go past the 80 kilometers an hour. I noticed if you put the cruise control on, it will let you go past that. But it's the, it's the mode I've been driving all week on. It's been great. I've had no problems in driving around. Very stable car. Then there's range, which is your middle setting. That, of course, still uses the one pedal driving. Both range and Sherpa activate the one pedal driving mode. It's, you can't adjust the one pedal driving. It's fixed. It's kind of a mid-range one pedal driving, so not too strong, not too soft. It just actually works quite well and takes you to a stop and then the brakes will clamp on and hold you. So it does have the hold assist all as automatic as part of those modes. Then if you put it in normal mode, you get, you get all the power and you get pretty well no uh, brake regeneration. Uh, so it acts like a normal car. You can coast in this vehicle with very minimal, if any, power coming back to the batteries as you're coasting. But if you want that similar to ice driving experience, you can get it in normal mode. So just quick comment about driving the Fiat 500e here uh, for the week. It's been an extremely fun vehicle to drive, as I mentioned. Super easy to navigate, move around parking lots and park, get in and out of places. It's just been, you know, even park in the garage, it's just been effortless with this vehicle. I've been driving again in the eco mode, which is the Sherpa mode, which has been fine. A couple times I've changed it just to try out the other modes. Uh, but, you know, I've been fine in eco mode again, trying to get that range um, out of it. 
Um, it's got a good suspension. The 17-inch wheels provide really nice grip and, and a nice ride with the um, uh, strut suspension that it has here. A very pleasant experience. It can be a little hoppy over a lot of bumps, obviously, because it's a smaller car. But even though it's a small car, it does have a long wheelbase for the vehicle that it is to help absorb and help handle. Visibility is good. This particular model is the base model. It does not have things like blind spot monitoring or adaptive cruise control or this kind of stuff. And I've been fine in driving it. It just has standard cruise control and emergency braking, AEB, uh, and uh, lane keep assist, and that's about it. So uh, I don't really, you know, I'm just driving and, and able to see everything. So good visibility. Um, I was concerned a little bit about the wipers, but they work fine. I haven't really had to use them too much. The weather's been fairly nice this week. Um, the infotainment it is okay you know it's it's the you connect that uh, the Stellantis has in many of its brands it's functional it works okay um, you know I've been playing music the stereo system is okay you know I wouldn't say it's it's over the top but it has a nice sound to it this this one has a subwoofer as well so it's a decent system the drivers uh, binnacle display is nice it's a good setup there as well so everything's easy to read you could change some of the screens how they look and so forth um, nice big side mirrors and again a very quiet car even though it's a small car not a ton of wind noise coming in when you're at highway speeds and I really enjoyed that so you know all in all a very pleasant driving experience comfortable seats even though these are manually adjustable seats I was able to find a position and uh, and be comfortable for the whole week haven't had any issues again I wouldn't want to sit in the back for any amount of time other than an extremely short trip but it's there if you need it for small kids or a dog or pets or something like that it's there in a pinch this definitely is a two-person vehicle with the option to, to put a couple in the back so again, you know, I, I don't know what else to add. It's been an extremely fun car to, to boot around in. Get a lot of looks from people uh, come up and really like uh, this vehicle. Um, it's been really, really pleasant and easy to drive and a lot of fun. So they've done a great job. You know, everything's functional. There's no over the top bells and whistles. It just does what it needs to do. You can buy the higher spec trim with leatherette and, and all the ADAS features and some more convenient stuff. But I find this, this base model to be quite adequate. A couple of just quick things I want to add uh, in the driving. Um, two things. The start and stop button, you have to hit it twice to actually turn the car on to run. So it's like first time is like accessory setting and the second time would be to, for the car to run. So you have to remember to hit the button twice. It takes a little while to get used to, but then once you get used to it, it's habit. Um, the other, I guess, little Easter egg that this vehicle has is when you start it for the first time, every time, and you get up to 30 kilometers an hour, it plays... Uh, about five seconds of a little jingle from the uh, pedestrian warning speaker outside. It's just a little Easter egg. You'll hear some music coming out of that. I forget what the song is, but it's it's quite funny, um, quite fun, and it happens again for a few seconds. You don't really hear it when you're in the car, and it's not that loud, but it's just a little Easter egg that FIA has put into this vehicle. Um, also, um, just trying to see, I mentioned about ergonomically and everything is pretty nice. Now, one thing that I don't really like on this vehicle, because nothing is perfect, um, are these, um, uh, sun visors. <laughs> this is a pretty small sun visor um, and it will it will help block the front light but if you're looking for anything on the side it just really doesn't do hardly anything. Um, I get the afternoon sun every day and it doesn't block anything from here so it's it's kind of really cheap from a, a visor perspective but you know again I have to kind of scour the car a little bit to find things that I'm going to not really necessarily like in this vehicle. Um, so, you know, I, that's one of the small things um, that I picked out um, and a couple of the quirks. Um, and the other thing is it only has one cup holder. There's one in the back in the middle seat, um, but again, the back seats are pretty small and it's only one. So it's, it's a little awkward to get to. Um, it's a little hard if you've got, uh, you know, a, a coffee that's in a regular coffee cup, not one of the travel mugs. Um, I, I wish they had thought ergonomically. I don't know where maybe something folding down from the middle here might have been a better option than that. But it is what it is. Um, anyway, all in all, but, you know, it's a nice, you can see I'm driving. It's got a nice experience. Um, I would say one other thing is I would like the rear view mirror to be a little higher up um, because that's a pretty big um, part of the window that that camera takes. But I've moved the seat down a little bit, a little bit lower than I normally would sit, and I'm fine with that, and that helps increase the visibility of the front windshield, as you can see. So a couple things I just thought I'd add on to the driving experience that I forgot to say earlier, but all in all, again, a very pleasant experience. Just a quick info on real-world range that I achieved. Uh, as you can see, the efficiency was 12.2 kilowatt hours. 
per 100, which is really good, driving over 300 kilometers, um, I was able to see an indicated full range from 0 to 100, uh, approximately of about 230 kilometers. I would say closer to 240. So that is achievable in just city driving. If it's some highway, probably closer to the 220 range, 215, 220. Maybe even a little higher, though, in the city, because as you get warmer, of course, uh, the ranges get better, but very adequate for the use case that it's designed for. So for Canadian pricing, this is the uh, least expensive, lowest cost all electric vehicle in Canada right now, starting MSRP a base of $39,950 Canadian. There's one trim package that you can add to this and a, some, a couple of different colors to bump it up. It does qualify for the $5,000 Canadian federal incentive as well and provincial incentives as well. So if you in Quebec were able to get $13,000 off this car, you're really into uh, a very uh, inexpensive vehicle because the operating costs are going to be so low on this vehicle. So it's really a good bargain and a good pricing if you're looking for a vehicle that is a secondary or third vehicle, depending on what your use case is, a commuter vehicle. Again, with that range, the charging times, it's a great daily driver back and forth to work around the area, doing errands, whatever, picking people up, picking stuff, some stuff up, doing groceries, whatever. Again, you can get quite a lot of stuff in here. It's a great vehicle for that at a fantastic price. Yes, it's a little expensive when you look at the range of what you get, but again, you're gonna recoup that back in extremely low operating costs for this vehicle. So I hope you enjoyed my quick look at the 2024 Fiat 500e. Again, thanks to Lantis Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle. You know, it definitely is a recommending vehicle. Look, it's inexpensively priced. You get pretty good range for door, you know, daily driving. You go home, plug it in again, off you go. Extremely low operating cost. The fun factor is really, really great in this vehicle. It's a lot of fun to drive, very zippy, peppy, and people love the looks. I just want to hug this car. It just gives you that, oh, hug me, please. Fantastic car feet. You've done a good job. Certainly recommend it. Thanks very much for watching the show. All my contact details coming up. And until the next one, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.